Thank you, Pindara. Thanks a lot again. And um, we have a quick presentation. Now we focus on the Calipe project and the challenges and some practical, exam some practical examples that we have um, uh, encountered throughout the project implementation. Um, so, okay. Uh, the project entailed the comprehensive implementation of tailor-made and inclusive gender equality plans aimed at transforming structures and culture within uh, nine research performing and research funding organizations across Europe. We aimed overall to make those organizations more inclusive uh, to women, uh, researchers and young girls and other minority groups. Uh, the tailored inclusive gender equality plans are focused on STEM fields, uh, engaging at the same time in the entire gender equality process, uh, key external stakeholders participating at the, um, uh, research and, at the local research and innovation hubs of our partners. Our project from its conception phase adopted an innovative approach, uh, meaning that uh, actually from its conception phase and the implementation um, I followed the inclusive dimension of the European research area, namely uh, the intersectoriality, intersectionality, geographic inclusiveness, adding also an internal dimension to this via internal engagement via participatory activities. Acknowledging actually that these uh, inclusive dimensions are key for uh, fostering sustainable institutional change, the next slides focus on these dimensions where we mention some practical, uh, some challenges and practical examples of how we overcame these challenges. Sorry for that. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> so uh, focusing on the internal engagement, um, we mentioned that it's, a, it's like a chess game. Basically, you have to be strategic in order um, to involve uh, people in the JEP implementation process. You have to identify people internally that can mobilize resources and support you throughout the implementation of your gender equality plan. Uh, because actually internal inclusiveness is crucial for the success and the continuity of the gender equality activities. Uh, internal inclusiveness responds to the need of engaging internal stakeholders to the change management process. Uh, because in general, uh, we have seen that um, there can be delays throughout the JEP implementation. It can be at the setup, approval and implementation process, uh, process uh, of, the, of the gender equality plan. So you have to involve a key uh, stakeholders in order to, mo to mobilize um, internal resources. In this regard, as a practical example, and the thing that uh, worked based on our experience was the fact that each institution introduced a gender equality uh, working group uh, who was in charge uh, at, uh, for the JEP implementation process. Within that gender equality plan working group, uh, top and middle management um, um, uh, resources, uh, people from top, top and middle management were involved and um, were briefed uh, quite often throughout the project implementation process. Um, that's why we mentioned that you have to be strategic in order to, um, to achieve your goals. You have to involve people internally that have the power to mobilize the skills internally as well. Um, also, uh, uh, another strategy that we saw that it worked as a good example based on our uh, one of our institutions was the fact that, and that's why we suggest to go for the quick wins, actually they prioritized the, um, the implementation of actions that we call them more soft or preparatory gender equality activities in order to prepare and uh, create a more favorable environment for introducing more structural structural uh, change actions in the in the future of the implementation of the of the project, and it seemed that it worked. Going to the intersectional inclusiveness, uh, we have to contextualize our case, uh, and meaning that we will need to use qualitative and quantitative data in order to better understand the intersectional inequalities that our institution um, encounters. We are not having uh, we are not having all the same point of departure with regards to intersectionality. That's why we mentioned that we have to contextualize, and um, at the same time, not all institutions encounter the same internal and external resi resistances when it comes to intersectionality. Um, also, these are we have heard also the previous presentation. These are fostered also by the spread of anti-gender and anti-feminist ideologies within academia as well. Uh, it's not a, like a running game where we start all from the same line. That's why we have to contextualize our case. 
Uh, and actually, we propose to have uh, ad hoc strategic considerations in order to identify windows of opportunities when you encounter resistances when trying to, uh, to introduce some intersectional measures within your institution. Uh, in our Caliper project, uh, from the beginning, we tried to adopt an intersectional approach and promote within our institutions um, an intersectional approach um, uh, during the JEP implementation process. And our partners uh, found themselves also uh, in a position of negotiating in, um, uh, uh, in adding other dimensions and grounds of inequality apart from gender while implementing their gender equality plan in order to expand their approach and uh, found, this, uh, found already some resistances which they encounter, encounter them uh, based on uh, ad hoc uh, solutions and considerations. When it comes to intersectoral inclusiveness, uh, we mentioned that actually inclusive gender equality plans uh, can have only limited results if uh, the industry, the research organizations, civil society organizations, uh, government uh, operate in silos. That's why we have to collaborate. Uh, when it comes to intersectional, uh, intersectoral inclusiveness, engaging with key external stakeholders from the in the JEP, uh, gender equality plan process um, throughout the research and innovation uh, hubs, uh, partners from the research and innovation hubs that our partners have established, it seemed to work. Um, the, with this way, we, um, we managed to transfer also uh, uh, research results into the market and engage more uh, young girls to STEAM fields. However, when it comes to engage of external stakeholders, we have to acknowledge that we need to allow some time in order this uh, co uh, cooperation to work. We have identified within the project implementation actually that the involvement of external stakeholders within the JEP implementation process is much more beneficial to have a group interaction with different stakeholders uh, at the setup of, the gender of our gender equality plan. Uh, however, when it comes to the implementation, we have uh, understood that a much more bilateral um, approach and the group interaction with specific uh, stakeholders is more beneficial and engages, increases the engagement of the external stakeholders. Uh, and the last dimension is uh, the geographic inclusiveness. And normally, and actually this is the, um, um, the knowledge transfer from more advanced to less advanced institutions when it comes to gender equality policies is often taken, uh, is taken for granted. However, we have seen that actually this, is, uh, this works if this knowledge transfer is um, contextualized and is backed up uh, uh, and uh, tailored to the national uh, legislative context, but also to the, to the institutional context. Otherwise, Otherwise, there are some, um, it's not a straightforward line to, to transfer knowledge from uh, advanced institutions to the less advanced institutions. Um, so we say that actually the lines are more tangled based on the uh, national and the institutional context. And last but not least, uh, the key message of this presentation, I think we all know, especially we uh, all uh, that uh, uh, we are here, we work on this um, on this process and we know that uh, gender equality and um, institutional change is a long, uh, long way. Uh, but we have uh, to keep trying to, uh, in, to introduce measures and achieve our goals. Um, as a, a concluding remark, uh, we mentioned that actually leveraging internal and uh, external inclusiveness can, um, can lead to uh, a more successful uh, implementation of your gender equality activities. And here is um, a, a picture of us uh, a year ago. We were in London. We are all from uh, uh, participating at the consortium meeting. And this is, uh, this is in this way I want to, to finalize this presentation. And thanks a lot to all the partners for the great work that they have done so far. Thanks a lot. And now uh, we introduce Tindara. Thanks a lot again for um, I had the pleasure actually to collaborate with Tindara and the rest of the Let's Jeff's team uh, throughout the, the year for the organizing this panel. And I would like to give the floor to her now uh, for presenting the respective challenges and the practical examples from the Let's Jeff project. And before that, I would like to mention that Tindara is a full professor at the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia in Italy, is the coordinator of the Let's Jeps project and the co-leader of uh, the Working Group on Employment and Economic Wellbeing, which is a cost action. 
Apart from that, at Unimor, she is the Rector's Delegate for Equal Opportunities and member of the European Gender Budgeting Network. Her research interests lie in the areas of discrimination by gender and sexual harassment, and, um, gender budgeting and policy evaluation, as well as inclusive education and well-being. Uh, Sindera, the floor is yours. So, uh, first of all, I would like to say that, uh, as uh, uh, Kiki was saying, I'm the coordinator in the University of Modern I should not name my university, something strange. University of Modern Energy Media is the coordinator and I'm the coordinator inside it uh, of, the, of this project. And the monitoring partner is Haken University. Uh, and you can see all uh, our partners that join the project as implementing partner, Mathematical Institute for, of the Serbian Academy of Sciences and Arts. We have the University of Messina, the University of Tirana, the Max Planck Institute for Biological Intelligence and the Central Gender Equality Office at the Max Planck Society, the Institute de Sciences del Mar, um, that is uh, um, inside the Agencias uh, Estatal Conseil Superior Investigaciones uh, Científicas and also CY Sergi Paris Université. So as I was saying before, approaching to the end of the project is something like, like uh, um, there, can, there can be some sadness, but this sadness is really, is really uh, being overcome by really trying to step back and watch what our implementing partners uh, that for the first time were designing their gender equality plan did it in these years. Basically, we can see that from being uh, the first gender equality plan designed, they are now in their own countries really reference to other FPOs, but also to other institutions. Our external stakeholders were really brought in each one of our country in each one of the region within the country, because we are really very diverse also in our country, really brought in the process. And so let's go to some of our challenges. Design jobs really to get to a structural change. We don't want to be superficial, otherwise we haven't even applied for this call. We really think based on our research activities, based on our being together with the feminist movements really to change the society, that it was very important to start with really know what is the context, not only within the RPO, but also around it. So basically, we started together to think about a system of indicators that could be powerful to get really to know our own institution. And lots of resistances were found within their POs, but also in the statistical office at national level. Some were not really knowing that the importance of data to guide the process. But also thinking about that. There are some words that they cannot mention. Maybe I can take. So basically, for instance, we get for um, we designed a survey that was able to give us a vision of our RPOs uh, really getting to, for instance, gender biases, implicit or explicit in our RPOs. And that uh, based really also asking people because we are we had also very big um, universities or, um, or other uh, center of research. So we wanted really to get to know the impression of all the people, or at least a, a very big sample in the institution, to know whether they, they really thought about what were really important actions to lead us towards gender equality. So that was a chal another challenge. It is a crucial point in our project from the very proposal that we applied for, is making JEPs sustainable. 
Here comes uh, the experience that we had as University of Modena Reggio Emilia and the research group uh, connected, but also I must say, I really thank all the partners that stayed with us for this proposal, because at the very beginning, we, we really thought it was really important not only to have gender equality plan, but to have gender equality plan really within the gender performance cycle that really consider as an important point to really undertake gender budgeting for all the resources allocated in our RPO. RPOs. So that was another important challenge and I really am happy to tell you that not only we go through the first jab, the second jab, but also uh, we did uh, put lots of uh, effort to make our RPOs really enacting gender budgeting and that in our opinion really is a challenge that is difficult to achieve, but in my opinion has been achieved and of course it is important to go ahead and we tried at least to create the steps for that when the, as I was saying, this chaps is going to an end, the um, RPOs are going to continue this path, along this path. Then the other point is not only that uh, the unit, the research group inside the institution that we have uh, formed and trained, but well, was uh, there to do uh, gender equality plan and gender budgeting. There was the point of enabling, as the also the Horizon guidelines on JEPS say, to enable all the organization to really be there with the process. So in our opinion, it is and uh, shared with uh, all the other partners, was very important, it is very important to have training and to have different types of training for the objective that you want to reach. For instance, we had lectures using interactive methods and in pandemics we had also to enact uh, online uh, but it being interactive uh, so it, it, it was a challenge in the challenge but then as also um, you saw for a caliper was very important it is very important to uh, go to bilateral meeting because as was uh, said before there are diversity within the institution and uh, amongst the, uh, the institution so it was very important to have uh, bilateral meetings as well and also something that uh, you can see the pictures are another challenge because uh, there is an important well, all the, the five areas areas are important but when we go and see look at uh, the integrating gender equality and gender in research and in lecturing teaching we found that there is really a lot to be done and especially we think it is and we thought it was very important to bring young scholars with us so that uh, comes at this summer school on uh, uh, devoted to PhD students to early career researchers that could really go with the uh, in, in uh, research based for doing this also in the future so uh, Another thing that was very important for us and it is important to is to have uh, available learning uh, materials open source in our website and also the handbook I will talk to you later on. Then basically we do aim at reaching a gender equality environment that cannot be done alone. We need really stakeholder engagement and we need to involve all the other RPOs in the process. That is why when we had the international and national meeting, we really tried to really reach all RPOs to have them with us, not for competing, because there is not, in my opinion, there should be not a moment for a competition in this area. That is an area where projects should be sisters, and we should really grow together to achieve this uh, important uh, uh, target of gender equality. So we really share training uh, and also exchange practices. And that, in our opinion, is uh, really the, the way forward gender equality. So that is it for me, for me and we thank you. And uh, the photograph that you see is uh, in a very beautiful place. 
Now you must admit that they come from Sicily and it is uh, the summer school in Sicily, in Messina, that was organized by the University of Messina, but you can see all the members of our uh, group uh, together.